No, it's just lots of cream on top. I'm gonna shake it up because I don't wanna use all my cream up on scrambled eggs. Johanna made herself a poached egg. She's my presentation girl. <laughs> okay, let's go give the animals some hay, buddy. Come on. My first little rose finally bloomed. To give a quick fence update. It now goes all the way down this front part. Kind of hard to really see unless I go way down there, which I don't want to because I have Daniel by the road right now. So this will probably be the extent, and I will show you the completed later. Now, this isn't stained yet, so it has to be stained. The posts are stained. Okay, buddy, we're going back. No fun having you by the road. I love the view of this fence from the back. So this is standing near the interior fence. And then down by the road, we chose to do something a little bit nicer since it's by the road. And it is the six inch posts. And then we use deck boards for this. So this will just be the, just this road portion of the exterior. And then the rest of our property will just be T posts because it's hidden in the woods and woven wire. So we did the wooden posts up around the house. We did the wooden posts and rails by the road. Uh, we got a tractor going by, so it's a little bit. <laughs> uh, the wooden posts and rails by the road and woven wire through the woods. All right. It's gonna rain for the next lots of days according to the forecast. So, no, don't move that. Why don't you go play in your sandbox? So I'm gonna fill in some spots in the garden. A lot of seedlings came up and so I'm gonna fill in where things didn't. I usually like to do that a couple weeks after I plant. Just fill in where I think I'm missing. Being careful not to overplant. You'll see behind me we have tons of plants because this is all what we're going to be doing for our front landscaping. So this is coming soon. We are going to work on, hopefully, um, using this router here to make some trim for, I will just show you here shortly what I'm talking about, but we want to make our side porch match the front porch. So the front porch at some point had the trim stripped away and so we had some turnings made and we're going to use this to put it all together. All right, this is my box of wood turnings. I ordered it from a company called Abba Root Wood Turnings. They're out of Missouri, which is where we live, but we did actually have this shipped because they're about three hours away. We could have gone and gotten it, but I really wanted to get started on this project. So, basically I have a bunch of these corbels, which I'll take you over to the side porch here shortly to show you how perfectly they match. And these, spindles for the running trim that'll go 
above the corbels. Now these have to be sandwiched in between two pieces of wood. And we're just basically going off of what we see. It looks like it was made from one by fours with a routed edge. Now the boards that it's on on the side porch are a little bit wider because it used to be an actual one and now it's more like three quarter. But we're just gonna go with the three quarter and hopefully make it match. Okay, here you can see that this porch has spindles and corbels and then this porch does not. And here's how well it matches. I think it's pretty close. You can see here the board that the spindles are sandwiched between. That's what we're working on today. I also ordered some new spindles for going up the steps because we have about one broken, two missing, and one that was replaced at some point with a new modern one. So I want to replace all of those with the original. So this here is the original. I, I just mailed this to them because it had come, it came out, which I think we can still use this one, but it is a little bit damaged at the top. And this is their reproduction. So it's pretty, pretty good. Pretty close match. I'm impressed. Now this one here, I couldn't actually get them down because I thought I would damage them. So I just traced the original corbels and spindles onto a piece of paper instead of sending them the actual item itself. And they got it almost perfect. So I think it's gonna look really great and give some more charm to the front porch. All right, we just had a quick lunch and I cleaned up the kitchen and got the kids down for nap, so that took a lot of time. And now I'm going to get some raw milk yogurt going in my Instant Pot. It's actually been a while since I have made this. I've been just making the regular traditional uh, yogurt where you heat up the milk first because I didn't have any of the starter culture and I was just putting off ordering it. Because of all of the natural bacteria that's present in the milk, you can't use a starter from the previous batch to get the next batch going, whereas with regular yogurt you can. So I just keep using the same starter over and over and over again. I really prefer the raw milk yogurt both for the health benefits and because it gets this cream layer at the top that is so delicious. And so I'm ready to get back into it. I bought a good little amount of the starter and hopefully I can stay in the habit of ordering that starter so that I can just keep making it like this. But you know, I get in and out of habits and it's easier just to use a little bit of yogurt from the store and then use previous batches so that you don't have to buy yogurt for months at a time. But this way is better. So first I'm going to get about two cups of the milk started in my instant pot on the saute function. Now this two cups will be heated, but because it'll dissolve the gelatin, which will make the, all the yogurt set up better, it will be the only part that's heated. And I'm gonna shake it up first because I don't wanna get all my cream heated. So about two cups of milk and then two and a half tablespoons of this gelatin dissolved in it. So I'm just gonna heat this up until it's all dissolved. All right, well that's heating up. I'm gonna do something else too. I had some sauerkraut going and sometimes what happens is when the sauerkraut expands, the liquid pushes out the top and you're left with dry cabbage at the top, which I am here. You can see the liquid only comes to about here unless I press it down. 
So I'm going to top it off with some brine so I can allow it to continue fermenting without mold. To do this, I just got about a tablespoon of salt going in water. I've allowed it to cool. I'm gonna actually add a little bit of ice to it to get it nice and cool so don't kill off any of that good bacteria. And then I'm just gonna pour this brine just as much as I need. I won't need all of it so that the cabbage is covered. So this is something you can do when you're fermenting. If you notice that the top part is getting dry, just add a little brine and you'll be good to go to allow it to continue fermenting. So the milk, 16th of a tablespoon, you don't need much, of this into the gallon of raw milk. Stir it in, and then set my Instant Pot to the yogurt function for about eight to 24 hours. I might put this in the fridge before I go to bed. Otherwise, I can let it go all the way overnight. All right, that was gonna be the last thing I did before I went back out to help Luke with the project on the porch, but instead I have all of this leftover brine that I use to top off the sauerkraut. And so I'm just gonna real quick cut up some jalapenos, pour the brine over it and ferment some jalapenos as well. Might as well, because I already have everything I need. Let's see, from center to center, it's about four and three quarter. Okay. Guess that's what we'll go with. From this end, it's... I don't know, it's a little bit more than three. You just find in the exact center? I can find the exact center of that board, I guess. I would just mark the center of your top, yeah, where it's routed. Good to me, every five inches. Be shorter than the uh, bottom. Yeah, Probably not. Mommy, I want to do it. Okay, we gotta do every other. It's gotta be. It's gotta be one, two, one, two. Page one. 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 Page one.